For those of you watching the European Football Championship, we've recently got word that Denmark midfielder Christian Eriksen collapsed during a game against Finland. He required CPR on the field, but has since been stabilized in hospital. I wanted to explain and take you through a play-by-play -play of what went on in more detail. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sonam, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. On this channel, I break down injuries as they happen so that average fans can better understand what's going on. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date. For now, let's go back to talking about what we as doctors are thinking about on the field. So I'd like to preface this by saying, you know, I am glad that Christian is in hospital and stabilized right now. Many of you may be wondering what in the world is going on and what as the medical team we must be thinking and doing well on the field. Let's review the footage in a bit more detail and I'll discuss exactly what goes on in a doctor's mind. So the first thing I wanted to bring your mind to is this right here. So essentially Christian collapsed without any, any preceding kind of notion that he would. He completely collapsed while taking a, a pass from a colleague. That is a bad sign. And that's what we call a collapsed athlete. Let's keep watching. So here you have the medical team and, and the medical team right now is looking at three really important things, airway, breathing, and circulation. We're not worried about the C-spine in this case. So we want to know, is he breathing? And you know, here you'll, you'll see some breaths kind of coming out, but it's hard to assess on, on video footage right now. Then we're looking to see whether or not, you know, his circulation is intact. How do we do that? We check for a pulse. And this is where we check mainly the carotid because that's the strongest pulse we have in our body. And if we don't feel a pulse, that's when we proceed to an ACLS protocol, which is essentially advanced to CPR. So one thing I wanted to bring your mind's attention to here is, you know, the, the players are forming a wall here. And I can only imagine how traumatic something like this is with the players having to watch and hear this. You know, I am a doctor. I have had to perform CPR on call in the hospitals. And, and to be honest, this is not something that you want family members and close friends to have to see. CPR is done to the point where we, we're essentially compressing the heart. So we're making the heart beat for, for that person. And it involves tra trauma to the ribs, fractures to the ribs, and, and you can hear and see that. So, you know, my heart goes out to all these guys who have to actually watch that. But it was nice that they kind of blocked off the fans because this is a pretty traumatic thing having to watch in a player that, that you know and love. So, and you'll see here, the team is performing that CPR, but as we discussed, you know, it's being blocked off for more respect for the patient and the family. And I think that is totally appropriate being on that side and having to perform that resuscitation. I wouldn't want fans to have to see that either. So on the field, you know, when we're performing CPR at this point in time, we are thinking about putting an airway in and taking them to hospital. So the other thing that the medical team will bring on is something called an AED, which is an automatic external defibrillator. And I'm going to put up a picture here. You'll see it in all sporting events. It is mandated to have to be there. And essentially it is defibrillator pads that we put on the heart to help restart a heart. And when a young person who collapses on the field without any other undue cause, it is cardiac until proven otherwise. And this is where you get the pads on them because the faster you get these pads on there, it can look for things like an arrhythmia, the heart stopping for that type of condition and be able to shock it back. And it's the single handedly best thing at saving lives on the sideline. So we did get reports that Chris Jones in hospital and has been stabilized and is getting investigations. But as a doctor, what am I thinking about when a patient like this collapses on the field? So in terms of what we're thinking is going on, when we have someone like a collapsed athlete, you know, first thing we're worried about is the C-spine. In this case, we're not worried about them. Then we figure out whether or not they're stable and unstable. In this case, Chris John was unstable. And if they started CPR, he was likely pulseless. This is when you start your ACLS and your BLS. So your CPR that we're trained and that you guys, many of you are also trained in as well. And they're going to the hospital. As soon as you start CPR, they're hundred percent having to go to the hospital. Most of them will require intubation at that point. So when it comes to figuring out what the causes of a, a collapsed athlete without any trauma are, this here is a, a play-by-play -play of some of the common causes. So you're thinking sudden cardiac arrests, which is number one and why that defibrillator is so important. So this is things like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, essentially the people who, who collapse at the end of marathons, the young athlete who collapses on the field and eventually succumbs to their injuries because their heart stopped beating. Essentially in these people, they had a genetic predisposition that their heart was, their heart wall was too thick and strong. I could predispose them to arrhythmias and cardiac arrests. This is where AEDs are so important. Then you have things like heat stroke. Um, you also have something like 
you know, if you have a very low salt volume in your, in your blood, it can actually cause you to collapse and you need an ACLS. Anaphylaxis, so allergies, right? That's I mean, a big, big one. If it's really severe, it will cause you to collapse. Insulin shock. So for example, if they are hypoglycemic, if they had diabetes, they took too much insulin, this is a very common cause. And, you know, really acute asthma is something that also to be considered, but I wouldn't really put this high on my differential right now. It's really these ones up here, you know, cardiac arrest, exertional heat stroke, um, anaphylaxis, as well as hyponatremia that are super important. So what do we do? We revive them. We do our ACLS. We make sure we get them. We start CPR. We get those defibrillator pads on there and take them to the hospital. This is where the eMERGE doctors will take blood work and work him up. So he will likely get a cardiac workup right now and blood work. They essentially need to rule out, did he come in with a sudden cardiac arrest? You can rule out a heat stroke by just checking their temperature. And things like hyponatremia and anaphylaxis, well, anaphylaxis is very historical based. Hyponatremia just needs blood work to rule out. Overall, you know, I am extremely reassured that he's in hospital in stable condition. Looking at the care that he got on that video, he actually got really timely, acute medical care on the sidelines, which is amazing because sometimes there's a delay to that. So he had world ca class care. Once I get more information about his condition, I'll leave them down below. If any of you have any questions or comments about what went on or anything I had discussed in the video, leave them down below. If you like this video and want to stay up to future videos I do in the future, please like and subscribe to my channel. For now, that's all.